Welcome back guys, it's been a wee while since I've made a video. Uh, something I've been looking into recently is different ways to stretch my images as I seem to suffer from star bloat quite badly. I have generally put this down to me having a fast F4 Newtonian and I've seen that other people with the same sort of equipment seem to have this problem. Another thing that has come up recently is I think I might have a fault with my coma corrector or perhaps it's just not well suited to my uh, equipment so hopefully that will help me as well so just to show you can see that these stars are quite blotchy and don't have much definition to them so I got to thinking there has to be a way to do this there's lots of stuff you can do in post processing um, but I wanted to do it er as early in the process as possible so I have created a quick tutorial here just to show how it's done so one of the things you can use other processes as I mentioned that would be the ones that I've come across deconvolution works really really well but I felt there's a wee bit more it could be done mask stretch again it's another process where you would stretch the image using mask mask stretch and then copy those stars into your original image and they do soften the edges quite a bit the same with these three they tend to be done after the image has been stretched so the way I have done this and the results are kind of here and this is using some pretty nasty data but you can see the difference between this is the new one and this is the old one and there's a, a drastic difference in the smaller stars and quite a good reduction in that large star without killing off the diffraction spikes as well so essentially what the process is is that you take your original image and if it's a colour image, you extract the likeness. If it's a mono image, just take a clone of it. And then you apply a, an auto STF to it using histogram transformation. So that permanently stretches the, this, this image. It's not the original. This is sort of the one you use to create your star mask. And I'll, I'll just run through all this in a video as well. Um, once you have your star mask, you can apply it to your original image and you perform a small stretch not a very drastic stretch using histogram transformation just until you can see the, the galaxy or the, the mid-range stars starting to come out a bit then you stop then you remove the star mask and continue to stretch on as normal and that is pretty much all there is to it on this web page I have given all the steps with some screenshots showing how it's done but I'm actually just going to repeat this process now live to see how it goes so I'll just switch over to my main machine so one thing I have done I've taken a bit of a gamble here so this is an image that was stretched without using this process I just stretched it manually so we can use that at the end to see if there's any massive difference hopefully there will be so this data is, I think, just under 7 hours of luminance using 3 minute subs of the Whirlpool Galaxy. Uh, not fantastic data, you can see it's, it's a bit bit of background noise and stuff in it, but it, it's it, the actual image itself, the final image, turned out really well. It's probably my favourite image of this year. So to get started, we take off that stretch. And because this is a linear, or a, a mono image, I just a clone by dragging it out and that's the clone take it here Keep it a bit. Um, there are other ways of doing this you can click this and go image and it is duplicate that will do the same thing then what we will do if you have I suppose I should have mentioned this if you have a color image what you want to use is process all processes and then it's channel extraction bring this up put it in lab mode and untick AB and if you paste this over your RGB image it would kick out uh, a likeness image of it I can't do it because obviously I don't have an RGB image so this is our cloned image and we're going to use this to create our star mask so what we do is we go processes and bring up histogram transformation I could remember what way the alphabet goes so I'll just reset that we don't need anything selected for it and we will also bring up the STF screen transfer function wherever it went it will be on another P 
page, no doubt. Get it now. So, I'll just reset that. Doesn't matter about the link channels because I only have one channel. So if we click the auto stretch, then we drag and apply this to our histogram transformation. Reset that tool and then drop that on. And now that image is permanently stretched. So we don't need the screen transfer function anymore. We'll minimize histogram transformation because we don't really need it for a wee bit. Now we create a star mask. Now star masks can be quite difficult at times, but for me, I find these settings seem to work pretty well, and to be honest, I think these are fairly close to the defaults, so I have my noise threshold was lower, and my scale was up at 8, and these are all 0, so it's actually not that close to the, the standard. This is the one I find works very, very well for my images. So what we do is we apply this onto our clone, and when this will kick us out a nice star mask. And that will allow us to mask the stars and stretch the rest of the image just a little bit, just to, just to give keep the stars back while bringing the rest of the uh, data up a bit. So that is pretty much us there. That's what my star mask looks like, and it's not bad. If I was normally, I guess I would probably use clone stamp. To remove these little bits around the edge of the galaxy but for this video I don't think I'll bother I don't think because they are quite dim or faint I don't think it'll really matter so then what we do is we can close star mask we don't need it any longer and we apply the star mask so you can drag it in here and drop it just below the name of the image that's one way to do it another way to do it is to go here and go mask select mask and then pick I assume it was Star Mask 1, I click OK. It was Star Mask 1. So we'll throw it up here to the road. So I have hidden the mask, so it's Control K to show it, or let's turn it back off, you can go Mask and Show Mask. So what you can see here is that this mask is actually the wrong way around. So it's actually blocking everything except the stars. So what you want to do is invert the mask, so that is Control shift i or Mask, Invert Mask. So you can see here that it is blocking the stars. If I give it a wee temporary stretch, you'll see how good a fit it is around the stars. It is fitting quite well. So we will take that wee stretch off and we'll open up Histogram Transformation again. So you can see where I have chosen to come to in this one. I've brought it into this bar so it's not a massive stretch let's see so it's not a huge stretch you can see it doesn't really move all that far on the graph so we will hide the mask again and we will drop this on as you can see not a whole lot changed there very very subtle if I take that back you can see the stars don't really change see a few of them brighten up and maybe a couple of dim ones come through that's enough, that's all you need to do. So we can reset that tool and then we go mask and remove mask, take it off and now we will continue to stretch. For this one I'll need the preview opened. So we'll bring it in, we don't want to go go nuts but so to be fair that's pretty much where the last stretch was. That won't be us finished, we'll need another one to go again so that's that's too much. Reset the tool bring it down, I see the background starting to come up, you can see some big dust bunnies here, it mustn't have got taken out very well. So if I drop this on, and I think that is enough for me, and that is pretty much all there is to it, so now we have a nice stretched image. So what I would like to see is how does this compare? to what I had done previously. Oh, there's a difference there, all right, thankfully. So if we put these two side by side, you can immediately see the difference. Big, big bloated stars. So what I'll do is, I'll jump us in here, and this is a handy wee trick, to see where you are on two images that are the same size. Drag this over and paste it over the top of the name. So you can see a dramatic difference. 
in those stars. You can actually see artifacts around those stars I can see coming through. See the rings? So I would say those should not be present with this one. Certainly to a much lesser extent. So I'm very happy with that. So that was a good, good enough gamble then that that seems to have worked. So for me, this is now the way I will be stretching my images. I think I'm just actually noticing there's a little galaxy in the top there that I hadn't seen before. It's quite interesting. I'll have to go and have a wee look and see what that is. Well, that is basically my process. Uh, if anybody wants to copy those process icons or any more information, please just uh, give me a shout. If you find it easier to use text-based tutorials, all of the information that I've given in the video is also in this uh, web page and you just go to my website go to tutorials and text and site avoiding star bloat when stretching a few other tutorials in there you might find useful uh, have a good night